Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, have you ever thought about writing a game, but you don't know where to start, you don't know where to get some graphics, you don't know what the basic things you need to do are? Well, here I am today to tell you all about that, how to write your first game. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. One of the best things about learning to program is that you can get rewards for your effort fairly quickly. So you can try something, you can write a few lines of code, and then you actually see the result. And of course, learning is always built on starting with the basics and then building your way step by step. So today I want to look at how you can write your very first game, not very complicated, but it has sprites and movement and collisions. And there's a case where the character dies and loses a life. All that's there, and then to really go on from there, you just build on top of the techniques that you're gonna learn. So, let's get cracking. Okay, so this is the game we're going to be making. Very, very simple, just two types of characters in it, the alien and some falling boxes, no background, nothing else complicated, but really we will see the basic steps here of how you actually write a game. And while that version did look a bit bland, it won't take you much after you've seen how to write that one to kind of add in some nice eye candy, add in a few extra things, like they're a key that you can get points for if you kind of collect that, and the game can very quickly start to take shape. So don't be uh, kind of discouraged if you think the first version is very simple. The first version lays down a great foundation. It doesn't take much to kind of get it looking even prettier. Okay, to do this, we're going to be using Pygame Zero. It is a Python library, and the zero part there means that it doesn't need any kind of boiler uh, plate code. You can just start writing it. You don't need to understand any complex APIs. You don't need to initialize this and set that and reconfigure this. Basically, even an empty file is actually a valid Pygame Zero uh, file. It doesn't do much, of course, but it's valid. Now, Pygame Zero is built on top of Pygame, which is a Python library for making multimedia applications, uh, including games. And it itself is built on top of SDL. SDL, the Simple Direct Media Layer, is a cross-platform development library designed to provide low-level access to audio, keyboards, mouse, joysticks, and of course, to graphics. So you've got SDL, Pygame, and then Pygame Zero. So a real rich set of features here, but Pygame Zero really lets you get into it without any kind of steep learning curve. Now this will work on uh, the Raspberry Pi, this will work on Mac OS, this will work on Linux, this will even work on Windows. If you are using Windows, you need to get yourself a copy of Python installed. The easiest way to do that is to get it from the Microsoft Store. Just go there and click on uh, the get and install buttons, or you can go to python.org slash download slash Windows and install it from there. And installing Pygame Zero is very, very simple. If you've got a Raspberry Pi, it's been installed by default since uh, September 2015. So if you are using a Raspberry Pi, this is a great way to get your game up and running. If you're using Windows, Mac OS or Linux, there are pre-compiled packages available. And all you do is type in pip install pg0 uh, and pip comes with the Python uh, program when you install it. When you install it on Windows there, it's already there on Linux, for example. And that will get you all set up and running. It's all you need to do. Okay, so the, here is the first few lines of our code. I've split up the code into a few slides here to try and break it down. First line, import random. That's because we're going to pick some random numbers later where the boxes are going to fall. We don't want them to just be always falling in the same place. We want it to fall at random places. Now, the great thing about uh, Pi, uh, Pi Game Zero is just to set the size of the window. You just say width is equal to and height is equal to. And I've gone for an 800 by 640 window here. You can pick any window size that you like. Now, to get that alien on the screen down at the bottom, we call that a sprite. There's a, an object called an actor object, which is really, really an easy way to control that sprite. And all we say here is alien, that's the variable, is equal to, it's a new actor, and we're calling alien here in there. That's actually the name of the file that's got the graphic in it. And we'll talk more about that in the next slide. But it will basically load up the alien graphic and assign it to this variable called alien. And you can then do things with it. You can set the position. So for example, the position here, width divided by two. Well, what's that? That's the middle of the screen. Height minus, well, the height of the alien divided by two. So there you go. He's right there at the bottom with his feet right at the bottom of the um, of the screen. I say here, because it could be a she alien. There's no reason why not. And then another thing we need some here is the boxes. There are going to be multiple boxes falling down. So we need to have a list of the current active boxes. 
And that's what this list is. There are no boxes at the beginning of the program. And the interval, how quickly do we want them to fall? We want them to fall quite slowly, 2.2 seconds apart. We'll decrease this to get them faster and faster and faster. So the game gets harder and harder and harder. So there we go. We've put the alien on the screen there and we've set the width and the height. Now I said we'd look at the uh, graphics. Basically, if you've got your folder here, your directory, with the, the program in it, falling.py, that's the Python script that's running for pay, uh, Pi Game Zero. And then beneath that you have a, uh, or in that same folder, you have a uh, folder called images, and beneath that you have alien. Now, alien there, look, exactly the same as what we specified here. You just don't need to put the dot .png at the end. It, it works that out for you. So alien, alien hurt, look, there he is. That's when he gets hit by a box. And box under bar empty, that's the empty boxes that are falling down. You put those in, the images directory. Now, where am I getting all these pictures from? Well, there's this is great website called kennykenny.nl. You can see the URL at the bottom. Thousands of sprites, 3D models, sound effects, which you can use in your projects, even in commercial ones. And here's a quick shot here, and you can see some of the aliens and platform stuff that we're using uh, in this game. Go over there, just download whatever you need and start using it in your games. Okay, now when you are running uh, a game in Pi Game Zero, there are two functions that are called constantly when something needs to happen. One of them is draw, and that says, how do I draw the screen? Where do I place everything? So here what we do is every frame, every frame that it's creating, we clear the screen, because we don't want the old screen, that's gone now. We draw the alien, alien, that's the name of the variable, remember, with the alien actor, dot draw, simple enough. And then our list of boxes, remember, we had boxes, an empty list at the moment, for x in boxes, x dot draw. So draw the alien, draw the boxes. If the list has only got one box in it, we'll draw one box. If we've got ten boxes in it, we'll draw ten boxes, simple as that. And that happens every time Pi Game Zero says, hey, I want to draw a new screen, now a new frame. What I call, I call draw, and we tell it what we want to do. Now, often when writing a game, you will want to schedule some game event to occur at a later time. For example, in this game, we want to add a new box to the game every few seconds. In fact, at that box interval variable. We can use the clock object to schedule a function to happen in the future. Really, really useful. You say, hey, in 2.2 seconds, do this thing. And then automatically it gets, it happens in 2.2 seconds. So you don't have to worry about when it's going to happen. You just tell it, tell it and it will automatically do it for you. Why am I saying that? Because the next bit of code uses the clock object. So we have a, a function called add box because we want to add new boxes to the uh, game. And we're saying boxes, boxes, if we're alien, our globals that we've used earlier on, let's make sure we've got access to them. So a box is a new actor. And what is it? Box empty. Remember, we saw that in the slide telling us about the images. P pause, position, where do you want it? Well, we want it there to go random. That's why we imported random. We want to pick a random place, okay, somewhere between the width divided by the, the width of the, each alien, so how wide they are, okay? So it's kind of got columns there, and you always start at the, the zero. This is the X and the Y, zero is Y. You start at the top of the screen uh, and go downwards. And then what you do is you add the box to the boxes. That's our list. So when the draw function is called, it says, ah, oh, there's a box now in that list. I'll draw it. Then the two final things we want to do here is we want to change the interval. So box interval is equal to box interval minus 0 0.3 seconds, but don't go any faster than 0 0.7. Otherwise, literally, it would just be raining boxes and you couldn't move left or right to avoid them. Absolutely impossible. And once you're inside the add box function, what do you say? Well, actually, clock. Remember, we said the clock for scheduling things. Schedule unique, one-off time thing we'll do. I want to call add box again. Well, that's the name of this function up here. Look, add box. And when, I want to call it in box interval. So basically, once you've added a box, it sets a timer and says in 2.2 seconds or whatever the current interval is, call this function again. It calls it, it adds a box, and then it says, oh, in 2.2 seconds or whatever the interval is, call this thing again. And so it just keeps on going round and round, calling itself to add another box after the interval. In a game, most of the action happens when, of course, two things collide, bullets with aliens, spaceships, or in our case, when the box hits one of uh, hits our alien. And there are several collision detection functions built into Pi Game. Remember, Pi Game Zero, the zero at the end is built on top of Pi Game, and you can use those. And the one we're going to use is Collide List. Now we've got a list, haven't we? We've got a list of boxes. So we're basically going to say, is there anything in our list that collides? It tests whether the rectangle collides with any other list of rectangles. So when you do collision, there's a rectangle around the box. 
imaginary, of course, it's virtual, and a rectangle around the alien. And when those two rectangles touch each other, that's when you know there's been a collision and it will return the index of the first box that has collided. If there's nothing found, it returns minus one, so you know that nothing has happened. Again, why am I saying that? Because we're about to use that now in the next section of code. Now, we talked about the draw function, which draws the screen every time we want to add a new frame. Uh, there's another function called update, which updates the game logic. So draw updates the graphics, update changes the game logic. And in the game logic, we want to do things like move the position of the box, move the position of the alien, detect if there's been any collision. So what do we do here? Well, we want boxes to be available, global boxes. OX, original X is equal to the current position of the alien. Why do you want to do that? Because at the moment, if he goes off the edge of the screen, we want to stop him from going off the edge of the screen, so you bring him back. All we say is if the keyboard left key, look how easy that is, keyboard.left. If the left key has been hit, then, well, go minus two to the left. If the right key has been hit on the cursor key, then go two to the right. And then here's the thing, if the alien is greater than the width, or it's less than zero, then set it back so it can't go uh, any further. Now here's our collision. C for collision is equal to alien, so that's what we're taking. Is anything touching, is anything collided with the alien? Dot collide list, what? Boxes. So has does the alien touch any of the boxes? If it does, then what do we do? We set the alien image to alien hurt. Remember we saw that picture? That's alien hurt dot PNG, but you don't need to add the PNG. We get rid of all the boxes. We just say there are no more boxes, so they won't get drawn now when the next frame is done. We say if there was a call to add box pending, and it's another two seconds away, then remove it because we don't want to add any more boxes. And then actually in one second, reset the game. So the alien will look all upset for one second and then the game will start again and reset game is a function that we will look at shortly. Now here's the second slide, it's still inside that update function, couldn't get it all on one slide, wanted it to be more readable, so if it's still inside the update function, what we're going to do, we're going to move the boxes and if any boxes have gone off the bottom of the screen we want to get rid of them, so boxes to remove is a list of boxes we want to delete on this particular go around, empty to start with, Go through a for loop for i in range of what, how many boxes there are. Boxes y is equal to boxes y plus 2. So basically move the box down by 2. If it's gone beyond the end of the screen, remember 800 by 640, then we add that box to boxes to remove to our list. So we say this box here has to go. And we do that until we've gone through all the boxes. Why don't we actually remove the box at this point? Because it then messes up this list. Because we've said, hey, there's a list of 10 boxes. Then halfway through the list, we remove one. Now there's only nine boxes. And then when it gets to the 10th one, it goes, oh, hold on, I thought there were 10 boxes. And now there's only nine. Oh, and then you get an error, of course. So we want to go through this list, moving all the boxes. And then we want to have a list afterwards saying these are the boxes to get rid of. And there it is, four iron range of boxes to remove. Dot boxes dot pop. There you go. That just removes that box from the list of boxes. So if there were nine and then one went off the bottom of the screen, now there's eight, it gets removed here. And that's the end of the update function. So what did we do in the update function? We did the left and right for the alien. We saw if the alien touched a box and we moved the box. So three simple steps. Now we called reset game earlier on. What does that do? It sets the box interval back to 2.2 seconds. It makes sure the boxes list is empty. It makes sure the alien image is back to the happy alien. And then what does it do? It calls add box. And so at the moment, the, the add box is not scheduled. It's, there's no clock function for it. It's not waiting to happen. It's not pending. As soon as we call it add box, of course, it adds a new box and then schedules itself again after 2.2 seconds. And in fact, that's actually what the main code is. There is the, these are all functions we defined up until now. At the very end of it, all you could do is call add box uh, because the left and the right and everything is handled inside the update function. The drawing function is what draws all the boxes and the aliens in the right place. And all we've got to do is call add box, which will add a new box to our scene and schedule itself to get called again after 2.2 seconds. So in fact, here it is all in one block. If you're on a smartphone or something, you probably can't read this. If you're on your desktop, go full screen. But there's all the bits I saw. There's the bit at the beginning where we defined the alien. There's the draw function. There's the add box function. There's the update function, a bit bigger, with our keyboard and collision stuff. Here's the reset game function. At the very, very bottom there, we just call add box to make it happen. And so to run it, you start up the command line, Linux, Mac OS, Windows, Raspberry Pi, doesn't matter. And you type PG, Pi Game Zero Run, PGZ Run, PGZ Run, and then the name of the file, falling.py, and that's it. The game leaps into life.
Now, once you've done that, what can you do next? Well, you can add a background, you can uh, add the keys to collect for points, you can add a high score table, you could add the idea of live, you could add a main menu, you could even do two players because you can do left and right for one alien on uh, on the cursor key, left and right to be kind of, you know, uh, Z and X on the other player. You can add in the ability to pause the game, you could have the alien shoot out rocks to destroy boxes. Once you've got this fundamental of moving players, moving objects on the screen, detecting collisions, resetting when you need to start again from here you can really advance on until as i showed that version earlier on which has got a bit more a kind of eye candy to it and looks a bit more kind of mario kind of uh, esque in its style doesn't take too much to get you there okay that's it i really hope you enjoyed that video my name's gary sims this is gary explains you can follow me on twitter over at gary explains also think about subscribing to my newsletter go over to garyexplains.com type in your email address and you'll get the newsletter no spam just the newsletter and i hope you find it interesting okay that's it i'll see you in the next one